Oh, this takes me back. When I was growing up, my dad was in the motor industry, so we'd always be driving around in fancy cars to try and spit fire. Or even cars like this, an MG. It's gorgeous. But every year until now, cars like these have had to have an MOT. But come mid-May, it won't need to, as unmodified vehicles over 40 years old in Britain will now be exempt from the test. The point of an MOT is an annual check to make sure the car passes basic roadworthy tests. And in an age where vehicles are becoming safer and emission levels are being more scrutinised, why was this decision even made? Until now, only vehicles that were registered before 1960 don't require an MOT. But the Department of Transport, after consultation, have now made the change, stating most classic vehicles travel low distances, undergo regular maintenance, and are in good roadworthy condition. They declined our invitation to take part in this film. But what do the car owners who this will affect think about it? I've come to Bista Heritage, which is holding a classic car rally, to find out. <laughs> Neil Simpson has a 43-year-old Triumph Stag and has had it MOT'd every year, but this year he won't need to. I mean, I rebuilt this from scratch mm -hmm. uh, myself. Um, and when I took it to the MOT station, it still had advisories. Really? The MOT inspector will always pick up something, possibly, that mm -hmm. I have missed. And I think that at the end of the day, it's 45, 50 pounds well spent. Yeah. Absolutely. Even if it's MOT exempt, I would still get a certificate of roadworthiness. Felicity Greenfield has a 1972 Fiat 500. It's, it's all very well saying that we're all enthusiasts and that, you, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to look after it. But then there's still a lot of cars out there that are bangers, for want of a better word. Yeah, yeah. But personally, yes, I would still have an MOT. Why is that? Is it just... Again, just for safety. a second opinion, safety. Yeah. But opinions are divided. This 1968 MG belongs to Seamus Doyle. He thinks it's a great idea and won't be MOTing his car anymore. I maintain my own cars. Anything goes wrong, I fix it myself. So for you personally, it's not a big deal because you think your cars are in great shape. Yeah. Most of the people I know with old cars are the same as me. I don't think anybody I know has got an old banger. Mm -hmm. um, they're always doing things to them, always improving them, always trying to, to, to get them better. So I don't see it as an issue. How many miles a year do you do in this? About a thousand. Oh, about a thousand. <laughs> so it's, un it's unlikely to suffer with a lot of wear and tear. No, not at all. But there are concerns from safety campaigners that there could be an increase in unsafe vehicles on our roads. Joshua Harris is from the road safety charity Brake. We may have enthusiasts looking after their cars very well, but they can't lift the cars up and look underneath to check everything's OK, and that's why we need proper testing to keep our roads safe. But he feels there is an alternative to testing classic cars. I think there should certainly be a, a role for safety testing for, for all cars, whether it is the, the highest MOT standards. Obviously, older cars will not pass the, the emission tests which are there. But in the government's consultation, there was an option for a reduced safety test, and we really think this should have been rolled out for these other cars, which cannot be covered uh, by the full MOT test. When the new changes come into effect, MOT or not, these vehicles will still need to be insured, and there are heavy fines and points on a licence if the car is found to be unsafe. But the ones I've seen at this rally, from the outside at least, look to be in tip-top condition. So my dad would have been in part responsible for a lot of the cars that I've seen today, and he's very proud that these cars have lasted so long. So it's a case of wait and see if the change in this MOT rule has any effect on the safety of our roads. <laughs>